good afternoon. Uh, we're glad to see such a, a large turnout for this event um, that is to highlight how we're using digital technology at Yale to meet our goals in teaching. Uh, this is one of several uh, Center for T Teaching and Learning forums, uh, and so we're glad to see you at this one and hope that you will uh, come to others. Fundamentally, teachers are experimentalists. Uh, we try something. If it works, we keep doing it. If it doesn't work, we scrap that and try something else. Uh, we're very much scientific, I hope, at least, in terms of how we uh, take on uh, ideas about what works in teaching. But at the same time, teachers are also thieves in the sense that uh, we're very much about trying to find ideas that work, and we don't necessarily really care where we find them. And so if we find things that work and we saw them in work that someone else was doing, uh, all the better for an opportunity to incorporate them into our, our own teaching. And so effectively what this forum is, is it's an opportunity to do some just wholesale, wholesale thievery as we look to borrow teaching ideas from each other uh, and utilize those teaching ideas and technology. Uh, the same kind of principles of looking for ideas in teaching and incorporating them into our own or as our own is what we're setting about this week as we uh, have faculty bulldog days, which is an opportunity for uh, all of us to uh, visit each other's classroom uh, and see what's happening in those classrooms and the kind of techniques that are being utilized. Specifically today we're looking at the opportunity to use technology in our teaching uh, to incorporate ideas of technology whether it be through the learning management systems we use or other kind of technology platforms uh, to be able to incorporate those into our own teaching for effective student learning. So I look forward to uh, what we'll, we will hear from the speakers as well as from the panelists. Uh, it's my pleasure at this point uh, to introduce our uh, keynote speaker, uh, Dean Marvin Chun, uh, who was recently appointed to be the new dean of Yale College. Uh, he is the Richard M. Colgate Professor of Psychology and a professor of neurobiology. Uh, his background is that he received his PhD from MIT, and he's taught at both Harvard and Vanderbilt, uh, and he began teaching at Yale in 1996. Uh, one of the things that Marvin uses is uh, Zoom in a summer session online course, uh, but it's also been my pleasure over the past few months since he became dean uh, to see his love for being able to do assessment and analytics of teaching, to be able to use data to make decisions about what's happening and what's working in the classroom. Uh, and so it's a pleasure to, to see that excitement about what data can do, whether it be through the Canvas learning management system or broader analytics about what's happening in the university. So it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Dean Chun and uh, turn the podium over to you. Thank you. Uh, so, so thank you very much for having me. I'm very grateful for your participation today and also for uh, the invitation to join this uh, fabulous session uh, from the Center for Teaching and Learning. Uh, I also like how my um, kind of informal opening remarks turned into a keynote um, <laughs> uh, speech, but, um, and so, um, but I'll try to um, speak a little more informally. I'll, I'll, have, I'll try to cover two uh, themes in my brief remarks. One is I, I just wanted to share why uh, I teach, which, which may be a little redundant for an audience who clearly has, is showing strong motivation and appreciation for uh, good teaching. Uh, and then the second topic is why, um, how I discovered, um, how I feel that interaction is so important in the classroom and how digital technology is enhancing our ways uh, to interact with our students in the classroom. Um, so just, just to share a few things about why I teach, and this is what I, um, uh, you know, I think about this all the time, especially in my new dean role, uh, especially as I collaborate with so many people on campus, so many amazing people. Um, I, 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 I kind of... Um, uh, don't accept the standard sense that there is a tension or, or a conflict or trade-off between scholarship uh, and teaching or research and teaching. Um, I, I find, uh, at least I feel that in my career, uh, the two activities have been incredibly uh, complementary uh, and mutually uh, reinforcing. Um, I especially uh, love uh, teaching uh, for the same reasons why I love my particular discipline, which is psychology and neuroscience. Um, we, we like to 
we do what we do um, partly because it's personally reinforcing, but also because we feel uh, it's, it has impact, that it's rewarding uh, to others, uh, that what I know, if I share with others, will help them do uh, whatever they want to do better. Um, I especially feel that way about Introduction to Psychology, which I teach here. I think psychology is a very integral part to a liberal arts uh, education, you know, understanding how people think, uh, how people make decisions, uh, how people interact with each other, uh, in what ways can uh, the mind and the brain go wrong. Um, I think these are all things that I want everyone to think about, not just the specialized researcher, the grad student, postdoc, or, or professor. Uh, and so it's with that motivation, I, I, I teach Introduction to Psychology, at the, um, which fortunately at Yale is a fairly large course, so I can reach out to a large number of students. Um, and I teach that, again, not because I have to fulfill my teaching obligations to the university, but I really treat it as an opportunity, uh, a privilege uh, to have access to you know, future amazing, uh, well, currently amazing students who will continue to do amazing things for uh, the world in all their different disciplines. I go in with that conviction. I, I literally, every time I stand up there, I, 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 I can easily imagine that there's you know, my future senator who's going to determine my grant funding is sitting there, or a future president, or a future NGO worker, a future teacher, a uh, future Nobel laureate, a uh, future CEO. I, I just see that in, in the audience. And I think especially we're lucky here at Yale that that, you know, that kind of imagination is actually true, that our students do leave Yale and go on to do amazing things. So if you can plant tiny seeds from your discipline, from your field, that will shape their minds and help them do uh, better things for the world. I, I just think that's just an incredible opportunity. Uh, and it's why I uh, feel that teaching is um, you know, a huge um, privilege and uh, something that we should try to um, you know, hone and uh, craft a skill that we should try to improve as much as possible. Um, so, th so that's just a few comments on why I think um, why you're all here uh, and why I'm here. Um, I teach introduction to psychology. S sometimes the class is about 500 students, um, and um, and we know here at Yale that students, or especially our students, don't like one directional lectures. Um, they they like to interact with each other. They like to interact with the professor uh, where possible, when possible. Uh, and so, uh, in, at least in my class, um, uh, the digital technology has, has played a very helpful role uh, in making my classes more interactive. Um, you know, at the very basic, you know, almost, almost uh, uh, banally basic, um, I use a lot of videos. Um, I use a lot of interactive um, demonstrations um, based on videos, based on computer programs, based on animation. Uh, I do things where I literally pose questions uh, to the class. I get them to talk with each other using these illustrations, using these uh, de demos and especially videos. Um, I think without that, um, as you can tell, I'm not a very good speaker, um, but I think my classes um, have been well received because I use these um, media in, in effective ways. I don't do like long five minute, 10 minute videos. I, most of my videos will last 30 seconds to, an, to a minute, um, but I do it in an interactive way so I can get the students talking even in a 500 person class. Um, uh, the other uh, tool that um, has been really, really essential for my introduction to psychology class are, are the clickers. Um, I've been using clickers for over 10 years since they first appeared on campus um, because uh, this way we can really do kind of live um, uh, input from the students in both uh, a way that's interactive, uh, that's, um, that's, um, that's live, but thirdly, that's anonymous uh, so that we can uh, collect data, do surveys, ask questions from students without them feeling self-conscious or embarrassed or intimidated by the size of the class. Um, especially the anonymity of the clickers has proven really critical, and I'll give you an example of, uh, you know, how, of a demonstration I give in my class. Uh, that students find to be very moving um, and something that I would not absolutely would not have been able to do without the clickers. Um, this is covering uh, Trivers' uh, parental investment theory. How many of you, some of you, I'm sure know Trivers' uh, parental investment theory? Um, this is uh, this is the notion, uh, evolutionary notion uh, that um, shows differences between uh, in all species, not just humans, but it shows differences in the way that um, males and females approach uh, sexual interactions. 
Um, uh, the, the idea um, is basically the, uh, the sex, which, which will differ across species, the sex that invests more in the, um, uh, in the birth and, and caregiving of an offspring will be more choosy uh, in a relationship, in choosing a partner. Um, and so in the case of um, <coughs> humans, uh, because women, you know, the pregnancy lasts nine months, and because the bulk of the child rearing, uh, at least traditionally, um, uh, rests uh, with the mother, but especially the pregnancy clearly rests with the mother, um, the idea is that because that, that is so expensive biologically, uh, women will be more choosy than men are when it comes to choosing uh, partners. Um, and so... I can describe this in the way I just did, and everyone I just kind of glazes over. Or I can do a questionnaire um, uh, to test a prediction that this theory makes, which is, um, with your clickers, you can pretend you have clickers, you don't have to answer, um, how long would you need to know someone before you'd be willing to sleep with that person? Okay, and I can give various options with the clickers, like one hour, one day, uh, one week, one month, two months, right? And, and so students have the options they can choose with their clicker. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and then for, furthermore, the technology allows me to divide up the group according to men or uh, uh, students who identify as male and students who identify as, as themselves as, as, as female. Okay, so I can answer this. I can ask this question. I can't ask them to raise their hands, right? Um, so uh, clearly, uh, that would be boring. Uh, just describing the phenomena is boring. But if I do this survey, I can analyze the data online and throw up on the screen. And moreover, I can say, this isn't data from some study published 10 years ago. It's not some data public collected at some other um, population, you know, in some city very different from uh, Yale and New Haven. Uh, this is literally your data um, that I'm showing up live on the screen. And, and of course, the results are that uh, guy, uh, women will take about a week to a month uh, before they, on average, before they feel comfortable sleeping with someone, whereas uh, men uh, in this audience um, will say that, you know, within an hour and a day, they're ready to, um, you know, spend the night with somebody. Uh, and students get to see this live, and we get to show, um, you know, the, the predictions of, tr you know, tr the parental investment theory. Uh, but moreover, it allows us to go into even more uh, meaningful and deep conversations about um, these differences and why, um, uh, and, you know, how they may relate to um, and how they should inform, you know, the kind of interactions, that, healthy interactions we want um, students to have with each other. Uh, so that's just another example how digital technology enables a class to be very interactive, very live, um, uh, and, um, and be able to, you know, touch upon sensitive topics. Uh, the other uh, things that are um, that um, that we we've explored and that I hope to continue to explore are things like Canvas Piazza, which are message forums. Um, you know, as you know, this is a social media generation. Students like to chat with each other a ton. Uh, this is more relevant for uh, seminars that I taught. But uh, you know, one of the most re reinforcing and rewarding things I got from uh, seminars that I've taught is that students like to chat with each other about the class material outside of the classroom, uh, even then when they're not in the same room. Uh, and so in the case of when I taught before Canvas P uh, Piazza was available, um, which is a kind of a message form uh, uh, tool, um, is that they were using group me's. Uh, they were using kind of text uh, to each other just to kind of share papers with each other or continue to debate things from the classroom. I mean, that's how hungry and motivated our students are. But I think now with tools with like Canvas, Piazza, and others, um, you know, if you could think of ways in your classroom to stimulate uh, dialogue and, and discussion outside of the classroom, uh, that would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, so those are just some things I've used for my large courses um, uh, to help create interactivity. Um, I've also, um, during summer teaching, I was fortunate to uh, collaborate with uh, CTL and its predecessor, uh, especially Rich Collins, um, to develop a flipped class um, where um, you know, I wanted to continue to teach Introduction to Psychology in the summer, but like I'm sure many of you, I like to travel in the summer, I like to be in Europe, I like to be in Korea um, uh, and Asia, and, um, and so it's hard to uh, teach for five weeks uh, straight uh, during the summer. Um, uh, and, and so I uh, offered my introduction to psychology class as a flipped class. Uh, we taped all the lectures. Student would watch all the lectures offline. And then we would meet for a regular time twice a week um, on this program called Zoom, um, which, is, which is like a, um, a group Skype 
uh, or a group FaceTime for, you know, that can hold up to like 15 to 20 people at a time on the screen. Um, but, but it's just infinitely, infinitely better than anything you've probably ever used, Skype, FaceTime, or any other uh, media uh, source. Can, uh, uh, Zoom is spectacular. Has anyone used it before? Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. See, isn't it? Yeah, great. So I'm preaching to the choir. Um, and Zoom has been really amazing because it's just technically uh, smoothless. But um, it, it, what I love the most about it is that it makes the class flat um, in the sense that there's no depth uh, to the room. If you're in a seminar room, you have people who are close to you. You have people way in the back. You have people, some people in the, you know, in the kind of the, uh, the seats hiding away. Um, but in Zoom, you really can't um, hide. Uh, and everyone has to engage in the classroom because it's a flat screen. And on top of that, your little your name comes up on the bottom, and so it's really easy to call out on people. Uh, I just think it's a fabulous technology that uh, really enables um, the flipped classroom to work uh, well. Um, you know, and so I think with these technologies, I would love for people to think about. Um, uh, distance learning, um, uh, where students can you know learn languages that are not offered at Yale. Um, Personally, I, I, I'm very excited about uh, the Yale NUS College in Singapore and the possible um, pedagogical opportunities that exist by collaborating with faculty and students there. Um, they're 12 hours away, um, and um, it would be wonderful if we could do something that uh, is more collaborative with them during the term. Um, I never, th I don't think, you know, we ever want to replace, you know, have Zoom replace live interactions in sections. I, I definitely don't. Um, I'm not um, proposing that. I, I really think that live interaction in the classroom is is really what's special about Yale and especially our residential college system. So I don't think a flipped, I don't want to use Zoom to replace live interaction on campus, but if it's with uh, colleagues, students, with t learning opportunities uh, from a distance, um, I think we should consider um, these powerful uh, tools. Uh, just two more online examples that I think are, are very exciting. One is online experiences for Yale scholars uh, with the code name of Onexus. Um, this is um, helping a cohort of incoming Yale students um, to prepare for the rigors of quantitative study at Yale, um, math, and especially in the domain of math. Um, so it's essentially a bridge program. Um, we have an outstanding bridge program called First Year Scholars at Yale, which helps students who come from uh, under-resourced high schools or a little bit less preparation uh, because of their socioeconomic backgrounds uh, to um, help them transition uh, smoothly to Yale by giving them a little bit of a, some bootstrapping and some, uh, some essential skills uh, over a summer program. Uh, it's absolutely effective and outstanding, but it's 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 cost prohibitive to extend to a larger, a much larger group of students. And so, if we can think of more online ways to engage with students uh, before they arrive, or even during the summers while they're here, um, I think these are things that we should uh, continue to try to pursue and and innovate. Uh, finally, I'll just share, um, you know, this potential. Um, um, a possibility of uh, partnering with Google um, to, and it's very much in the discussion stages right now, but if there's a way that we can help teach students coding over the summer, um, uh, especially to increase the number of women coders, um, that would be something that um, may be difficult to do during the school term, but something that we can do over the summer, especially in an online format that allows students to go out to wherever they want to go out and do um, and help them you know, learn coding um, offline uh, or online, I should say, um, while, while they're all over the world. Um, so these are just a few examples. Again, um, I'm just very passionate about teaching, and hence I'm passionate about this partnership between the Yale College Dean's Office and the Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, and, um, and I'm really excited about uh, ways to use digital technology to enhance our teaching, uh, because uh, we would like for Yale to be at the forefront of uh, technologies and, and especially the quality of teaching that we provide to our undergraduates. Um, uh, this, uh, the group is much larger, and I'm so happy to see it, it's so uh, numerous uh, here today. Um, and so thank you again for coming, for your attention, and I hope you have a, a terrific session. I apologize that I will have to leave at some point in the afternoon because I have to go teach. So, <laughs> so thank you.